Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using moment distribution method. In this frame, there is an inclined member AB, horizontal member BC, and a vertical member CD. There is no member load. In the point B, we have a nodal point load 20 kN. Since this load is acting towards the right side, this frame will sway towards the right side. Length of the horizontal member is 5 meter. The height of the vertical member is 4 meter. We have to find the inclined length of AB. We can use Pythagoras theorem. Here we have 4 meter and here we have 3 meter. Root of 3 square plus 4 square we will get AB which is 5 meter. Since this frame is subjected to Suway, we have to do the analysis two times. First, the non Suway analysis and then the Suway analysis. Now, let us start the non Suway analysis. We know that in this frame, there is no member load, but we have a nodal point load in the joint B. Since there is no other load, we can directly take this load as the sway force S yes, and the sway force will be acting towards the right side. Now let us start the sway analysis. We know that the sway occurs towards the right side. So let the frame sway by delta towards the right side. Let us keep S dash as the force which causes the sway. This is the deflected shape of the frame. We can draw a line from the point A to this point and then from this point to this point and then from this point to this point. From here we can draw a vertical line and then we can connect to this point and the joint B. We know that this distance is a delta. Let us keep this vertical distance as a delta V and let us keep this inclined distance as a delta I. This angle will be 90 degree. So this angle and this angle will be having the same value. Suppose this angle is theta, this angle also will be theta. Let us take this triangle. In this triangle, let us find cos theta which is equal to 4 upon 5, we will get 0 0.8. Then let us take this triangle. In this triangle, cos theta is equal to delta upon delta i. For cos theta, we can apply 0 0.8. Finally, we will get the relation delta i is equal to 1.25 delta. Again, let us take this triangle. Now let us find tan theta which is equal to 3 upon 4. We will get 0 0.75. Now let us take this triangle. In this triangle tan theta is equal to delta V upon delta. For tan theta we can apply 0 0.75. Finally we will get the relation delta V is equal to 0 0.75 delta. For the inclined member AB, we have to consider this displacement 1.25 delta. For the horizontal member BC, we have to consider this displacement 0.75 delta. And for the vertical member CD, we have to consider this displacement which is delta. Now we are going to find the movements developed due to sway. The formula is 6ea delta upon L square. We know that the sway occurs towards the right side. So in the inclined member AB and the vertical member CD, the sway movements will be negative. Now let us take the horizontal member BC. In BC, in the left side, we have the displacement. It is similar to sinking or settlement of the supports. We know that if the sinking occurs on the left side, the sinking movements will be positive. So in the horizontal member BC, the sway movements will be positive. 
in the inclined member there are two fixed end movements m of ab and m of ba length of ab is 5 let us apply that and we know that for ab we have to take this survey which is 1.25 delta so in the formula instead of delta we have to apply 1.25 delta in the horizontal member bc we have to find two fixed end movements m of bc and m of cb here the displacement is 0.75 delta so instead of delta we have to apply 0.75 delta length of bc is 5 let us apply that in the vertical member cd we have to find two fixed end movements m of cd and m of dc here the sway is delta height of cd is 4 finally we will get these three values let us assume that ei delta is equal to 100 so for m of ab and m of ba we will get minus 30 for m of bc and m of cb we will get 18 and for m of cd and m of dc we will get minus 37.5 in the movement distribution method, we have to find the distribution factor. To find the distribution factor, we have to calculate the stiffness. Let us see how to find the stiffness in the joints. If the fair end is fixed, the formula is 4EI upon L. If the fair end is hinged or with roller support, the formula is 3EI upon L. And if the fair end is continuous, the formula is 4EI upon L. In this frame, both of the ends have fixed supports and these two points are continuous. So, only we have to use the formula for EI upon L. From the joint B, we have to find the stiffness for BA and BC. Length of BA is 5 and length of BC is also 5. Let us apply both of them. So, for BA and BC, we have got the same stiffness 0.8 EI. Let us find the stiffness values in the joint C. From the joint C, we have to find the stiffness for CB and CD. The stiffness values for BC and CB will be same. Height of CD is 4. Let us apply that. Finally, for the stiffness of CD, we will get EI. Now, let us find sigma K. In the joint B, we have found two stiffness values. When we add both of them, we will get 1.6 EI. In the joint C also, we have found two stiffness values. When we add both of them, we will get 1.8 EI. Now we can find the distribution factor. The formula is K upon sigma K. We have found the K values and sigma K values. Using them, we can find the distribution factors. Now, let us start making the movement distribution table. In the table, first we have to enter all of the members, then the distribution factors, then the fixed end movements. Now, let us do the first distribution in the joint B. For that, we have to add these two fixed end movements and then multiply with the distribution factors. When we do that, we are getting negative values. So, we have to enter inside the table as positive. Let us do the distribution in the joint C. For that, we have to add these two fixed end movements and then multiply with the distribution factors. When we do that, we are getting negative values. So, we have to enter them as positive. Now, let us do the carryover. For that, we have to divide these values by 2. Then enter the answers. Now let us do the second distribution in the joint B. For that we have to multiply this value with the distribution factors. When we do that we are getting positive values. So we have to enter them as negative. Now let us do the distribution in the joint C. For that we have to multiply this value with the distribution factors. When we do that we are getting positive values. So we have to enter them as negative. Then let us do the carryover. We have to divide these values by 2 and then enter the answers. Now let us do the third distribution in the joint B. For that we have to multiply this value with the distribution factors. When we do that we are getting negative values. 
So we have to enter them as positive. Now let us do the third distribution in the joint C. For that we have to multiply this value with the distribution factors. When we do that we are getting negative values. So we have to enter them in the table as positive. Then let us do the carry over. For that we have to divide these values by 2 and then enter the answers. In the similar way we can do more distributions and carry overs until we get very smaller values. I have done up to the 6th distribution. I have stopped in the 6th distribution because in the 6th distribution I am getting very smaller values. But it is not necessary to do up to 6th distribution. You can still stop in the 4th distribution or 5th distribution because in those distributions themselves we get very smaller values. Anyway, I have done up to the 6th distribution. In the last distribution, we have to do the carry over only to the fixed ends. Now let us find the final moments. For that we have to add these. When we add, we are getting the final moments. Now let us take the moments in AB and BA and find the reaction in the inclined member AB. Both of these two moments are negative. That means both of them are acting in the anticlockwise direction. The reactions should be made perpendicular to AB. Let us keep the reaction in the point A as RA. Let us take moment A to B and find RA. RA is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 5, so 5 RA. These two moments are acting in the anticlockwise direction, so both of them are negative. Finally, for RA, we will get 10.78 kN. For RA, we have got a positive value, that means our assumption is correct. RA is acting in this direction and not in this direction. Now, let us take the moments in CD and DC and find the reaction in the vertical member CD. Both of these moments are negative because both of them are acting in the anticlockwise direction. We can take a moment above to C and find HD. For HD, we have got a positive value. That means our assumption is correct. HD is acting towards the left side. Now, we have to extend the lines AB and CD until they meet in a point. Let us keep the meeting point as O. We need to find the height OD. For the distance of 3 meter, the height is 4 meter. So for 3, it is 4. But I need the height at the distance of 8 meter. So we have to multiply with 8. So for OD, we will get 32 upon 3 meter. To find the distance of OC, we have to subtract 4 by 32 upon 3. When we do that, we will get 20 upon 3 meter. Also, we have to find the distance of AO. For the distance of 3 meter, the inclined distance is 5. So for 3, it is 5. But I need the inclined distance at the distance of 8 meter. So we have to multiply with 8. When we do that, we will get 40 upon 3 meter. Now let us take a moment about to O and find the sway force S dash. This reaction is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 40 upon 3. S dash is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. For S dash, it is the perpendicular distance which is 20 upon 3. The moments MAB and MDC are acting in the anticlockwise direction. So both of them are negative. This reaction is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 32 upon 3. Finally, for S dash, we will get 36.64 kN. Now let us find the correction factor K. The formula is S upon S dash. We have found S and S dash. Let us apply both of them. Finally for K, we are getting this. 
Now let us make a table. In the table, first let us enter all of the sway movements to get the real final movements. We have to multiply the sway movements with the correction factor. When we do that, we are getting the real movements for MAB, MBA, MCD and MDC. We have got negative values that means all of them are acting in the anti-clockwise direction. For MBC and MCB, we have got positive values. That means both of them are acting in the clockwise direction. Now using the direction of the movements, we can draw the bending movement diagram. Now let us take the inclined member AB. In this member, we can take movement above to B and find RA. Now let us take the vertical member DC and take movement above to C and then we can find HD. Now let us take the member BC. By taking movement above to C, we can find VB. In BC, there is no load, so VB and VC will be same. VB will be acting downwards and VC will be acting upwards. Here you can see the shear force diagram. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.